This is a mock-up of a labial bow soldered to an Adams clasp. Uh, this is just for this video. Imagine this being a labial bow. It comes up here and it's going to be soldered to this Adams clasp. I'm going to pull it in here close so we can take a good close look at it. Now you'll notice I've got the wire tapered on the end, the labial bow wire, and I've got the wires roughened up. Now I roughened it up so it'll have a good mechanical bond. I taper the end of the labial bow wire so that I can fully encase the wire in solder. I don't want the end of the labial bow wire to stick out of the solder. I want it fully encased. Now uh, I also have the wire laying one right on top of the other so we can have capillary action pull that wetted solder into the joint. For, it's going to be a two-step process. I'm going to wet the solder, uh, or wet the joint with solder. And I'm going to use my titanium probe, that's what I'm pointing with right now, to kind of paint that solder all the way around so I have it contacting everywhere. And then I'm going to put a light uh, buildup of solder on top of it with just enough heat to barely melt it into the wetted solder. And that way it'll be a nice strong joint. I don't want the end of this wire sticking out of the solder joint. That could cause uh, fluids from the mouth to seep into it and start to break it down. I'm also going to use a nickel silver alloy solder. It is highly resistant to tarnish and tarnish is what corrodes the um, surface of the solder and over time that causes it to get brittle and break down. So I'm going to use a solder that will uh, keep that from happening. I'm going to put the heat shield right up to here so that I have the end of the wire sticking, uh, still sticking out because I want to encase it. And I'm going to put the heat shield up to about right here so that I don't get this part of the wire too hot. So I'll put the heat shield on and we'll solder it. Now, I usually use a propane oxygen torch, but these are freestanding wires. They're going to get hot real fast, so I don't need that much heat. So I'm going to use just this regular little butane torch that you can buy at any hardware store or any dental supply company. And I'm going to use my flux, clean flux, and I'm going to use my titanium probe, and I'm going to use my nickel silver alloy solder. So here we go. I'm going to fire this up. All right, now I've got this adjusted just as low as I can get it. And I'm going to put a little heat on it and let the flux kind of sear in there. Okay, now I'm going to melt the flux and add just enough solder that I can sweat it. Uh, I'm sorry, I sweat. <laughs> the, the solder joint wets. <laughs> Okay, so this is real low heat. That's exactly what I want. I'm still trying to get the flux to melt. Okay, there we go. Oh, it's starting to ball up on me. It's less heat than I'm used to working with. That was really more solder than I wanted to get on there, but that's all right. I'm going to go ahead and use my titanium probe. I'm going to paint this around the entire solder joint. Well, this is really, really low heat from what I'm used to working with. But that's good. I'm not going to overheat it. Okay, see how nicely that titanium probe just allows me to just kind of paint it on there. Okay, so I've got that. That is well wetted. Not sweated, <laughs> but wetted. Jay sweats. <laughs> The solder joint wets. Okay, I'm going to put a little more flux on there. And now, I, I like to put a little flux on my solder too at this point. I'm just going to melt just enough to completely encase the solder. Now, it's got flux on there, but let's, let's get in closer where we can see. Can we see? Okay, it's hard to tell with the flux on there, but the end of the wire, eh, as soon as I hit that with a polish wheel, it's probably going to expose it. So I'm going to add some more solder to this keep that from happening. I don't want the end of the so of the wire, I said solder, I meant wire, I don't want the end of the wire to be exposed. Ah, that's not good. Oh well, oh yeah, there it goes, there it goes, let's go. That's, that's going to be okay. This heat is not anywhere close to what I'm used to dealing with. OK, 
Okay, I'm going to put just a little bit more. I'm not doing a really great job here, but you see what I'm see what I'm getting at. Okay, there we go. Just enough heat to barely melt it. And I'm going to put just a little touch, if I can, right back here on the tip end of this thing. Yeah, there we go. There we go. That's what I wanted right there. Okay, so I've got this thing totally encased in solder. All right, now I'm going to uh, dis uh, put it in water and let the flux dissolve, and then I'll show you how I'll polish this up. Here it is after the flux is dissolved. And it's not my best effort, but it's not my worst. It's a little more solder than I would like to have. Uh, I should have practiced with that torch. I hardly ever use it. Uh, but anyway, it's, it's, it's a good sound solder joint. You can tell the end of the wire is fully encased in solder. I got it nice and wetted before I applied the bulk. So it should be a really good strong solder joint. Now, when I polish this, if I, I'm not going to reduce that joint. It's, it's a little bulky, but it's not, you know, overly bulky. And what I'm going to do is uh, I'm just going to use a, a little Robinson brush and some polishing compound, and I'm just going to go over it and shine it up. And I'm not going to reduce it any for two reasons. If I, if I reduce it, I take a chance on exposing any subsurface porosity that might exist. And we don't want bubbles showing in our solder joint. Uh, hopefully I soldered this well enough. It doesn't have porosity. And another reason, if I grind on it, I just might grind the solder down to the point where it exposes a wire. And I don't want that done. Now sometimes I'll use a, a rag wheel it does a little better job than this Robinson brush to kind of smooth it out and then use a the Robinson brush to get into the hard to get to places but for this video I'm just going to use the Robinson brush I like to use these um, vinyl gloves not latex gloves but vinyl gloves they don't get caught in the spinning object and they keep my fingers from getting black and dirty. Okay, well, you see what I'm doing. So there we have the finished solder joint.